Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the channel today. In this video, we're going to try something new. This was suggested by a viewer when I asked what sort of content you guys would like to see, and I thought that this was a really cool idea that I could turn into a really neat series. So today, what we're going to be doing is looking at the entire physical media history of the movie Jaws. Now, this idea was let's take some popular movies and talk about their history across home media from Laserdisc to VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, all the way up to 4K. Talk about the different releases they had, some of the differences between each release, where there were restorations done, and just give you a history of how this movie has come to home media. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to dive through the history of Jaws, ranging all the way back from the 1970 MCA Disco Vision laser disc release, which you can see I have in my collection, all the way up to the current day 4K release. Talk about the promotional items for each of them, the advertising that was going on, and give you a short 10 to 15 minute history on this amazing movie. If you guys enjoy this one, I will do more of these. We can dive into some other classics and some other movies that you want to learn more about. But today, this is the physical media history of Jaws. So the story of Jaws starts back in 1975 when it was first released in theaters. Now, throughout the summer of 1975, Jaws became really the first summer blockbuster. It was an absolute sensation. Within two months, it had already grossed $100 million, and within three months, it had overtaken The Godfather as the highest grossing film at the North American box office. It was a huge theatrical success that led to re-releases in 1976 and in the summer of 1979. For a time, it was the highest grossing film of all time until Star Wars, which passed it just a couple of years later. But it's safe to say that this was one of the biggest movies that had ever ever hit American or international theaters. So based on the theatrical success, it certainly makes sense that when home media became available, that Universal Studios would want to take advantage of it. And so in 1978, Jaws actually became the first ever Laserdisc title that was marketed in North America. This was the MCA Disco Vision release, which I showed you here at the beginning of the video. And that was released very, very early on in home media. 1978 is even pre-VHS. Now this MCA a Disco Vision release actually has three discs in it, two of them being double-sided and the last one being a single-sided disc. So in order to watch Jaws back in 1978 on physical media, you actually had to put in the first disc, then flip it, put in the second disc, then flip it, and then put in the third disc. There were five disc changes just to get through this movie, purely because laser discs didn't hold much back in 1970. One interesting little tidbit about this 1978 release is that this actually was released on physical media before it was ever aired on TV. Typically, back in the 60s and 70s, the way that you would see a movie for the first time if it wasn't in theaters would be on a channel like ABC. But ABC didn't actually air Jaws for the first time until November 4th of 1979 after that theatrical re-release in the summer of 79. So for the first time, I would say probably in history, you could actually watch a movie on disc before you could watch it on TV on ABC. And that's just sort of a cool note that they really pushed Jaws and made it one of the first physical media releases that were ever available. Now, following the 1978 Disco Vision release, the next home video release of Jaws was in 1980, and that was on VHS. Now, 1980 was still in the very early days of VHS, and they were still in a format war with Betamax. Betamax still owned about 40% of the market. VHS had started to take over. It owned the majority of the market, and by the mid to late 80s, VHS had been the clear winner. Now, even though VHS did win the format war, Jaws does have Betamax releases, one of which you can see here. So they're not the most popular. You will not see them in many places. Most of the video cassettes you'll see will be VHS tapes, but Jaws did have a short-lived run on the Betamax format. Now, after the VHS release in 1980, there was not another mainstream format release until 1987, 
when Jaws was re-released on Laserdisc and VHS. However, in 1983, there was a fairly obscure format which did get a Jaws release. Now, in my research, I barely saw this come up, and I actually only found it while I was Googling and looking for pictures of different formats and different releases like Laserdisc cover art. And in 1983, Jaws was actually released on CED. So the CED format was developed specifically by RCA, and it was pretty much locked down to their players, which made it a fairly short-lived format. But it is interesting because a lot of the sites that I looked at did not mention this release, but you can 100% see here by the pictures and by current eBay listings that there was a 1983 release of this movie on a different format. So wanted to make sure I included that here because I didn't see it on a lot of the other pages that I was looking at, but it definitely came out in 1983. And so it's important to note in the history on physical media of Jaws. Now, after the 1980 VHS release, we didn't see another release of Jaws until 1987 when it was re-released on both VHS and Laserdisc. There wasn't much here on the VHS release that was different, although I think the timing of it was purposeful because 1987 was when Jaws The Revenge was released. They were trying to drum up some interest in the Jaws franchise. This was Jaws 4, notoriously one of the worst movies ever made, but it makes sense that in 1987 this would have been re-released, especially considering it had been seven years since it had seen a VHS release. Now, the 1987 Laserdisc is interesting because if you remember from 1978, there were three discs and you had to flip the disc five times. On the 1987 Laserdisc release, it used a technology which they called extended play. This meant that they could fit more data on the Laserdisc and you only had one disc here for JAWS that you had to flip one time. So it just is a two-sided single disc instead of two double-sided discs and a single-sided disc on that earlier release. So the technology had improved just in that short nine years to the point where you could now fit the whole movie on one double-sided disc. Now, Jaws did have another VHS release in 1991, which interestingly enough was the first time that Universal Home Video got involved. Previously, this had all been MCA Home Entertainment, MCA Disco Vision. This had been on MCA's docket, but MCA merged with Universal Home Video and they kind of joined forces here. So in 1991, that release was an MCA slash Universal Home Video release. There was also a Laserdisc, which was released in 1992, but again, nothing really important there. It was just another re-release of the movie with slightly different artwork, but not much changed until 1995. Now, in 1995, for the film's 20th anniversary, MCA and Universal Home Video issued a collector's edition release. And this was the first time that we saw some special features on physical media for Jaws. So in this set, you got this little behind the scenes retrospective on the movie, how it was made, which is really cool. You never had really these making of featurettes before um, but you also got some specialty stuff it included the the soundtrack as well as the novel jaws by peter benchley which is what the movie was based on had some nice premium limited edition signature collection packaging it was an overall very nice release for the time period it's a nice collector's item and it's something that i do wish i had in my collection and i'm hoping one day i'll be able to hunt down now, that re-release was a huge success. It sold over 800,000 units in North America, which that's, that's really good. That's a really good number for 1995. Now, the final VHS release for Jaws came in the year 2000 to mark the film's 25th anniversary. Now, again, this release came with special features, which were really cool, on an additional tape. So it was a two-tape set. And the second tape contained a documentary, some deleted scenes, it had outtakes, and it had the film trailer. So while this was a cool VHS release and was Jaws' final VHS release, in 2000 there was a much bigger release on a new format that really got people excited. 
So in the year 2000, Jaws was first released on DVD. This was for the film's 25th anniversary, and it had a massive, massive publicity campaign, both because Jaws in the 25th anniversary is a big deal, but also because DVD was still sort of a new format, and the studios at that time were really focused on selling copies of physical media. Now, that DVD had the documentary. It had interviews with Spielberg, Roy Scheider, Richard Dreyfuss, Peter Benchley. It had some other extras like the VHS had with deleted scenes, trailers, production photos, storyboards. In just one month, that DVD sold one million copies. An insane number for physical media. Now, after the massive success of the 25th anniversary DVD, we had another five-year period where Jaws didn't get any releases, but... As we know, they still do today. When Jaws hit its 30th anniversary in 2005, Universal Studios Home Entertainment put out a 30th anniversary DVD release. This was actually released in June of 2005 during Jaws Fest on Martha's Vineyard, which is pretty cool. I have never actually had a chance to go to Jaws Fest, but I have spent time on Martha's Vineyard. In fact, for this channel, I recorded an entire video on Martha's Vineyard, my last vacation, where I went to different shooting locations for the movie. But Jaws Fest is a must have for Jaws fans. You need to go see it, and I will someday. But in 2005, that's where they released the 30th anniversary, and it had a bunch of new extras. So while it still had all the extras that were on previous releases, this also now had a two full hour documentary and a brand new interview that was previously unavailable with Steven Spielberg that was actually done on the set of Jaws back in 1974. So nothing really was done, you know, restoration wise, but they added some new extras, which made it a pretty cool anniversary release. Now, after 2005, we have a pretty big gap. We go all the way till 2012 before we have any real Jaws news. And in 2012, this was a big milestone because this was the release of the first Jaws Blu-ray. Now, this was a Blu-ray and DVD release released in 2012 as part of Universal Studios Home Entertainment's 100th anniversary. You may have seen some of these slipcovers on movies over the years, but they had a big run of new movies, especially new Blu-rays that were released for the 100th anniversary with special artwork. Now, this was actually released in 2012 in the summer again at Jaws Fest in Martha's Vineyard. Now, the Blu-ray disc had over four hours of extras, including the excellent documentary, The Shark is Still Working. This, for a long time, was the definitive version of Jaws. This was the first time it had been released in HD, and for the 100th anniversary, they had restored the movie for that high definition release. So believe it or not, in 2012, that's when the film was rescanned, it was cleaned up, it was resurfaced in HD, but it was actually scanned at 4K. So the restorations that we'll talk about later on in this video, very shortly, were actually all completed in 2012 for Universal's 100th anniversary. Now in 2012, along with the 100th anniversary, there also was a best of the decade 1970s slipcover of Jaws, which you could pick up. That has a little bit of different artwork, but they all released on the same day. And if you think back to the year 2000, when the DVD sold 1 million copies, this sort of shows you even in 2012 how far physical media had slipped because even though this was the first Blu-ray release, this movie only sold about 350,000 units. So not as big a success as the DVD, which sold 1 million copies in one month. So even in 2012, physical media was slowing down a little bit, but at the same time, not a lot of people had adopted Blu-ray. So I'm sure it sold many more units over time, but DVD sold 1 million copies in a month. Blu-ray sold 350,000 in the same time period. So now that we have the Blu-ray in 2012, you know, there are some variations of Jaws that were released. There was a Digibook. There was some other stuff that went on, but ultimately it was mostly the same release with the same special features. So from 2012 on, that was the only and best version of Jaws that you could buy on Blu-ray. That was the restoration. That was as good as it got until june of 2020 and you can see that they've strategically timed all of these physical media releases for the summer and that's because jaws just does better in the summer it's a summer movie everyone wants to watch it in the summer 
So in June of 2020, that's when we got Jaws for the first time on 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, and it incorporated that 2012 restoration, but brought forward HDR color grading for the first time. That release also gave us Dolby Atmos audio on JAWS for the first time, which was never previously available. And as of right now, that is the definitive version of JAWS. The 4K release looks awesome. It had a steel book, it had a few different variations, but if you wanted to get the best version of JAWS, up until 2020, it had been the Blu-ray. After June of 2020, it was certainly the 4K release. So that really is the history of JAWS on physical media going back to 1978 with that initial LaserDisc Disco Vision title, which was the first ever LaserDisc title marketed in North America, bringing you all the way through the VHS era, through DVD, through Blu-ray, and into 4K in 2020. So honestly, at this point, I don't see how they could go any further. It's a 4K scan. It looks beautiful. It was really well done with the color grading. It's probably the best that that movie will ever look. Now, I know I say that now and technology always improves, but I truly think that this could be the end of Jaws on home media. And so it's kind of fitting to make this video now because as far as I'm concerned, this is the full history. I don't see 8K discs becoming a thing, and I don't see them ever really giving us much benefit over what 4K does. This is pretty much it as far as home video comes. This is, this is the peak of the format, and so in my opinion, this is the full history of JAWS on physical media. So I appreciate y'all watching, listening. Hopefully this was an interesting video and you know, let me know in the comments what you think I should do next. Ideally, it would be a movie that goes back into at least the 60s or 70s like Jaws does so that we can get that full view from LaserDisc through VHS to 4K. But if you wanna hear about something else or hear about any other interesting physical media releases or movies that have had an interesting path, let me know and I'm certainly willing to do the research, create these videos for you because I have a lot of fun talking about physical media and of course have a lot of fun just talking about movies in the industry. So let me know in the comments if there's others you'd like to see and let me know if you enjoyed this video in this sort of almost documentary style here um, that I've done for this, this release. So yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure you follow me on social media and make sure you check out my podcast as well as subscribing on YouTube. All the links are down in the description. And if you want to pick up Jaws on 4K, you can click the link down in the description to Amazon and that helps support my channel. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and stay healthy out there. And I will talk to you guys soon.